In 1985, I was getting ready to start my junior year in high school. Please don't do the math on that. <laughs> and that, big, that summer, the big blockbuster movie was a movie called Back to the Future starring Michael J. Fox. Anyone remember that one? Right? So, and like so many movies about time travel, the point of this movie was he had to go back in time to right a wrong, you know, to fix something. And he went back in time in a tricked-out DeLorean. And the lure of time travel and the lure of this movie is imagining being able to go back in time and have a do-over, right? And fix something that you got wrong. So think about that. If you could go back in time, what choice would you change? What we experience at any given moment is a result of a choice we made in the past. The fact is that our choices are acts of creation. And as we all know too well, they can be acts of unbelievable destruction. And most of us don't have a tricked-out DeLorean to hop in and go back and fix things. So here's the question. How, in real time, do we make choices that create the future that we want? And the answer is actually very simple. We do that by deciding what we want. Not what we're willing to settle for, not what someone else is willing to settle for on our behalf, but on what we really want. Because every choice you make takes you closer to what you want or further from it. So if you think about choice, it can be broken down into two categories. And the first are what I call milestone choices. And these are the biggies, right? This is, you know, who you marry, if you marry, whether or not you have kids, how you educate yourself, your career, the big stuff. And the second type or category of choice are what I call day-to-day -day choices. And essentially, a day-to-day -day choice is your answer to this question. Do you want fries with that? Do you want to supersize that? Please drive forward to the first window, right? It's the little stuff, the little kind of choices we make every day. And about a year ago, I was doing research for an article, and I came across a question posed on an internet bulletin board, and it forever changed the way I think about choice and how we make them. So this was a question. What is the most important choice you will ever make in your life? And someone posed this answer. The most important choice you will ever make in your life is whether or not to follow your heart or to follow the crowd. And the reason this struck me is because what I know about milestone choices and how we make them. They have three characteristics. The first is that you make your milestone choices when you're young. Think about it. Marriage, whether or not to have kids, your education, your career, all of these choices we make when we're young and inexperienced. The second characteristic is that milestone choices traditionally are expected to be made one time and to last your whole life. And the third characteristic is that milestone choices are subject to a tremendous amount of scrutiny. Everyone watches you make these. Your friends, your family, your mailman, your teachers, like the whole world is watching. I mean, that's what it feels like. And many of these people feel like they have a stake in the outcome, and you don't want to disappoint them. So you're young and inexperienced, you have to make the choice of a lifetime, and everybody's watching. No pressure, right? Easy, this is simple. But the fact is, these things combine to make it extremely hard sometimes to follow your heart. And this is not a new challenge. A, a scholar and a mythologist named Joseph Campbell spent his entire life studying cultures and people. And he discovered that we all tell the same stories. We all live the same stories. And for centuries, people have been conflicted about whether or not to follow their heart or to follow the crowd. I mean, our first speaker today, a trained engineer who feared telling her parents that she was really a poet and wanted to be a poet. And the journey we take when we choose to follow our heart 
Campbell called it the hero's journey. The hero's journey. And to embark on this journey, you must do one thing. You must find the courage to follow your heart. Campbell had a fascination with Native American tribes. And Native American tribes have a very different approach to how they treat young people emerging as adults in their culture. So rather than subject them to the advice and scrutiny and influence of their family and their friends and their community, they have a rite of passage called a vision quest. And the young person goes out alone into nature for four days without food, without water. And during this time, they come face to face with themselves, with who they are, with who they were meant to be, with how they want to contribute to their world and to their community. And when they come back, no one comes up to them and says, medicine man, well, you never make any money doing that. Just be waiting tables your whole life if you become a medicine man. You're going to break your mother's heart, right? Nobody puts them through this torture of like, it's not good enough or you can't do that. Their vision, whatever it is, is honored. I work with college students, and I ask them to write down what they want most, their fondest dream, on an index card. And after they do that, I ask if anyone will stand up and share what they've written. And in rooms of 100 or 200 people, maybe one person will stand up. And mostly they're standing up because they feel sorry for me that nobody's participating. So I ask those who don't stand up, I say, why didn't you get up? Why didn't you read what was on your card? And invariably, they always say the same thing. I was afraid people would think I was stupid. I was embarrassed. What, what I want to do is ridiculous. So they come up to me afterwards with their cards. And these are the things that they share with me. One young man said, I want to try out for the Olympic team in my country. A young woman said to me, I want to be the first woman in my family to graduate college, to have a career and live on my own and support myself. Another young woman came up and she couldn't even read what was on the card. She goes, I just want to show it to you. And on her card, she had written, I want to go back to my home country and start an orphanage for the children there. Okay, these are not things that are stupid or ridiculous or that one should be ashamed of. And you know, the same thing happens with the adults I work with. People are self-conscious and almost afraid of their own deepest desires and dreams. And as a result, they often settle for something that they're okay with saying out loud. And I believe this has to change because when we lose touch, with our deepest desires and dreams, we lose our way. These things need to be given a voice. Dreams are meant to be realized, not to be outgrown or hidden away. So I'll pose this question to you. What would you write on your card? And would you have the courage to stand up and own it? When I was in my 20s, I was much like the students I work with. I don't know what I would have written, and I don't think I would have had the courage to actually stand up and say it out loud. When I graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I also had this incredible sense of, like, I was in a rush, right? You know, you just feel like, I have to do something, right? Adulthood is starting, and I don't want to be late. And for me, it was like adulthood was a train leaving the station. And I thought, that train is going to stop at all the stops that I need to stop at. You know, it's going to give a predictable path. It's safe. It's certain. And if I knew then what I know now, I would have let that train leave the station. I would have gone to the lounge, and I would have had a drink. I would have had two, maybe three. But I would not have been in such a hurry to get on a predictable path. Campbell said, if the path before you is clear, you're probably on someone else's. And it's true. But dumb me, I got on the train. And it led to my first job, which was with a prestigious company. And one day, this company took us to a ropes course for a, a team building event. And when I got there, 
I realized what a ropes course is about. And the point is, it puts you in scary positions, right? On these rickety rope bridges and high places to help you push past your fear, to show you how much more you can do. And when I realized that that's what this was about, I thought, this is what I want to do. I want to help people push past their fear, realize their potential, and get the lives they want. This is how I want to spend my life. And that was the voice of inspiration. And it was immediately followed by the voice of fear, which spoke way louder and said, are you crazy? You can't work in the woods at a ropes course swinging from tree to tree. Like, they don't have health and dental. They don't have a 401k. And then, last but not least, what will people think? Right? And when you're 20, you worry about what people think. And it scared me. And I left the ropes course that day, and I didn't look back. I chose the path of certainty, right? The predictable outcomes and the predictable rewards that a job at a traditional company gives you. Our choices are heavily influenced by our discomfort with uncertainty. Studies show that the more choices you have, the harder you find it to make one. And they also show that we look to others to affirm our choices. It's why testimonials are such a huge, huge marketing device. Because we think, well, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And that's great if you're buying a flat screen TV, but it's not great for living your life. And what makes it even harder is there are so many predictable outcomes in our world. Think about this. You can buy the same cup of coffee, the same outfit, the same meal, in Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, New York, LA, Paris. Our culture feeds this need for certainty. We return to what we know and like. But here's what's even scarier. We return to what we know and don't like. For some people, this is going to work every day. And it's so common that we have a phrase for it in our culture. It goes, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. And that day on the ropes course, I went with the devil I knew. Because I didn't have the courage to follow my heart. And it's 25 years ago, and it's still a tough thing to own. But that story does not end there, because the buck doesn't stop with milestone choices. You see, you still have your day-to-day -day choices, right? The, do you want fries with that? And these garner far less scrutiny. These are things like, do you work late or do you spend time with your kids? Do you eat junk or do you take care of yourself? Do you spend your money or do you save it? We make these choices unconsciously without thinking about them. But these day-to-day -day choices have the power to have so much more impact on your life for two reasons. First, you get them every day. And second, you can change them anytime you want. And you can change the course of your life. But there's a catch, because there's always a catch. For these choices to have impact, you have to decide what you want. And if you don't decide what you want, then these choices are just like grains of sand passing through your fingers. You know, they don't amount to anything. But if you decide what you want, your day-to-day -day choices become like bricks. And a brick is powerful. A brick has potential and a brick has promise and you can build something with it. You can build your life with it. And the truth of this, I didn't realize until about a year and a half ago, I was having coffee with a friend, and she confided in me that she was unhappy in her marriage, and she began to tell me why. And I said, well, how long have things been like this? She said, 20 years. I said, 20 years? How could you be unhappy for 20 years? How could you tolerate it? But then she began to explain why she stayed. Her fear of losing her home, money, her place in the community, fear of what might come after. And as she told this to me, I realized that I was in the exact same place as my friend. Except for me, it was with my job. It had long ago lost any meaning for me. And I was downplaying how unhappy I was for the same reason she did. Fear of losing the three S's. Status, security, and salary. And I realized that 20 years was going to go by 
in a blink. And that like my friend, I would be living with the pain of regret because I never summoned the courage to decide what I wanted and go for it. And once you see something like that, you can't unsee it. And I started making very different choices. And one year and four days ago today, I resigned that job and I walked away from that career and I didn't look back. And this gets to the heart of what I want to leave you with today. That uncertainty in your future, that devil you don't know, is not a devil. It's not even close. And if it looks like one, then keep going, keep working, keep trying. But whatever you do, don't settle for a life, a love, or a career that doesn't make you feel alive. Choose not to. No matter where you are in your life or how you've made your milestone choices, it's never too late to decide what you want, to take your bricks and build a life of your dreams. And if you feel that you've walled yourself in with the choices you've made so far, then take your bricks and build a doorway and follow your heart through it. Thank you.